Hi everyone, Adam from Rethink X here. Thanks for joining me again. In this episode, we're going to focus on the disruption of labor by robotics and artificial intelligence, which has an enormous role to play in solving our greatest environmental challenges. So let's dive right in. Most conventional environmental thinking stumbles right out of the gate on the issue of scale. Many environmental problems just seem too big, too big to face head on and actually solve. And so instead, conventional thinking says we ought to retreat from these problems. That's where all of the narrative around degrowth and downsizing and belt tightening and austerity, that's where it all comes from. Now, I often use the analogy of a house on fire to illustrate what's going on. In this case, it's as if the fire appears too large for the fire department to handle. So out of desperation, we figure the only option is just to bulldoze the house. <laughs> well, part of our research at Rethink X and my book shows that the fire department will soon have vastly better tools to work with. Yes, today, it seems like getting greenhouse gas emissions to zero, putting the fire out in the analogy, is a daunting challenge. Today, it seems like restoring the atmosphere and the oceans with carbon dioxide removal, repairing the house, is an insurmountable task. Today, it seems like cleaning up pollution, ending animal agriculture and commercial fisheries, reforesting billions of acres of land. These all just seem impossible. But that's today. With today's technology. It's only with energy from fossil fuels that it's impossible. It's only with transportation from combustion engine vehicles that it's impossible. It's only with labor from human beings that it's impossible. New technologies, new tools, change the game completely. Now, when I was first writing about this a decade or more ago, I was ridiculed. Tony Siba was as well. Super abundant clean energy? Science fiction. Electric autonomous vehicles? Science fiction. AI and robotics? Science fiction. Well, do those technologies still feel like science fiction to you? So let's focus on robotics and the disruption of labor. Keep in mind that robotics right now are the most expensive and the least capable they will ever be. They will only get cheaper and better from here. As of mid-2024, it looks like humanoid robotics will start deployment into warehouses, factories, and other commercial settings at under $200,000 per unit. Energy and maintenance costs are rounding error compared to that kind of capital expense. And so let's set those aside for the minute. Now, if a bot works 20 hours a day, 350 days a year, that's about 7,000 hours a year. That's a lot more work than a person can do. If it lasts three years, then it's around 20,000 hours of work before it gets decommissioned and hopefully recycled. $200,000 for 20,000 hours of work. That's $10 an hour. You see where this is headed? Even at $200,000 a piece, robots are still competitive. And that means they're still disruptive. Now, robots are smaller and not much more complicated than a typical automobile. So scaling up production should easily bring down the cost to $20,000 per robot. That's labor for $1 an hour. In fact, at least one company, Unitree, has already announced a humanoid bot that will sell for under $20,000. Okay, so what if you close the loops with robots and the other disruptions, energy, transportation, and food, so that you're building robots, using robots, using ultra cheap clean electricity from solar, wind, and batteries. Well, then you're going to be closer to $2,000 a piece. 
That's 10 cents an hour for labor. And that's assuming they only last three years. What if they last six years? That's five cents an hour. What if they eventually cost $1,000 and last a decade? That's approaching one cent per hour. Now the upshot of that is that the marginal cost of labor is going to plummet, plummet toward near zero. And here's a phrase you've heard me say again and again, not a century from now, but within the next 20 years. Now, keep in mind, labor is an input into every link in every supply chain of every good and service in the economy. Labor is the ultimate limiting factor. Now, what that means is that as labor gets cheaper and more abundant, so does absolutely everything else. Now, will this turn the global economy and society upside down? Yes. Could it be a rough ride, despite all the obvious benefits that an explosion in productivity and affordability would bring? Yes. Do we have a huge amount of work to do to figure out how to navigate this disruption of labor safely and humanely? Yes. And my team at Rethink X will be sharing insights about these extremely important topics going forward. But for this series, what does the disruption of labor mean for the environment? Well, it means that every environmental problem is going to become much, much more feasible to solve. Today, our biggest environmental challenges, like climate change, are overwhelming and cause for dismay because they just seem like too much work to tackle. We don't have the labor it would take. We don't have the money it would take. We don't have the means. But what happens when the cost of robotic labor approaches one cent per hour? Or think of it this way. What environmental problems could you solve if you could rent 1,000 robots for $10 an hour? Waste cleanup? Recycling? Removing invasive species? Planting forests and rewilding brownfields? Operating carbon dioxide withdrawal facilities? It's all possible with a super abundance of labor. And that is why the disruption of labor is so profoundly significant for the environment. It changes the game completely. Now, one final piece of the puzzle that's important to mention is that the disruption of labor by AI and robotics will accelerate the other three mega disruptions, energy, transportation, and food. Now, we've talked about how impactful each of those will be for the environment as well. So if you had any doubts about how we were going to build enough clean energy capacity or enough electric vehicles or enough precision fermentation and cellular agriculture and build them fast enough, there's your answer. The disruption of labor by AI and robotics. They will absolutely turbocharge the other disruptions and vice versa. They all accelerate one another. The robots are coming, and it's going to be one of the best things ever to happen for the environment. Okay, so knowing this, what should we do? We need to build. We need to build robots and deploy them as fast as we possibly can. That means advocating for policy and investment. It means national mobilization. It means there's a global race to the top now, and the race is on. We need to be in it to win it. The sooner we can deploy millions of robots, the sooner we can solve all of our environmental problems. Okay, that's it for today. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you everyone for watching. And just remember, the future is brighter than you think. We'll see you all next time. Take care.